Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the channel. My name is Sky and today I'm going to be bringing you my number one solo musket build. I've been getting loads of questions under my comments and during my streams on what build I'm running. Uh, I've never seen that type of build before. Why are you running that certain ability? I'm going to clear it all up for everyone. This is the build that I've been personally using and I'm probably going to main for most solo content in patch 1.2. And that build is called the Lone Wolf build. What we're going to be talking about in this video is the strengths of the Lone Wolf build, the very specific talent selections of the build, important stat distribution, armor, gems, and some perks that you need to look out for. So without further ado, let's jump right into it so I can show you guys this amazing build. The strengths of the Lone Wolf build is that it's a true jack of all trades spec. It has high damage from all types of range, whether it's melee, sniping, or even the mid range. It doesn't get countered by any specific class. It has very high sustain and control due to traps, great durability to having that medium armor and constitution. And in my opinion, it is the best solo build you can play as the musket. Those are some of the strengths of this build. Let's move on to the talent tree now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're in game now. And now I just want to quickly go over the three abilities you're going to be using in this spec. So number one is going to be traps. Number two, you're going to grab powder burn. And number three, you're going to grab shooter stance. These three abilities right here are amazing at doing almost anything you really need to do. Powder burn is great, obviously, for almost any situation. Shooter stance is phenomenal for landing those kills from very far range. And traps gives you that high sustain and keeps melee off of you, you know, so you could you know, get some healing from the scent of blood talent, which is right here, or you get some extra damage from trap damage as well. So it's very, very good setup potential with traps. Now we're going to go into some, you know, basic talent tree, which is we're going to upgrade powder burn for the 12% uh, additional damage when they're hit and then chronic trauma. So if you land a headshot with powder burn, the burn is extended by four seconds. We're also going to grab empowering headshot. We're going to grab Heightened Precision, which is a stackable 2.5% damage increase every time you land a shot while you're aiming. We're going to grab Increased Headshot Damage the further the target is away. So, so when you get the jump on somebody and you have that Powder Burn loaded and they're far away and you land that headshot, it is very crucial to all the damage that we're going to be dealing. Ballistic Advantage, which removes the damage fall off when targets are further than 50 meters, which is very, very important. And then we're going to grab Shoot More, which changes the shots on... Shooter stands from three shots to five. Then we're going to grab Marksman for three consecutive shots hit on the target out of five. All the other cooldowns are reduced by 25%. So it's very, very powerful. And finally, we're going to grab Sniper. Sniper allows us for that optical zoom for sniping targets from miles away and getting that 15% increased headshot damage. Now, moving on to the Trapper Tree, it's mandatory to grab Salt on the Wounds. 10% damage increase to targets below 30% health. It is amazing for executing those targets, so we're definitely going to grab that. We're going to grab Trap Damage, which increases the damage taken while they're trapped. We're going to grab Hustle and Tactical Reload, which is an instant reload after you dodge. Scent of Blood. And we're going to grab Double Traps. Now, this pretty much wraps up the musketry, and this gives us great mobility with Hustle and Tactical Reload. Great Sniper Damage with all these Sniper Perks. Um, shooter stance for getting those, you know, for landing those kill windows if people are running away or they're trying to engage you from far away. And great consistent damage with powder burn. Now, let's move on to the rapier. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Oh, he's just going to go over a basic rapier tree. Not this time. I've been using Tondo a lot. And I'm going to give you my case on why I think it's so, so good right now. I'm even considering trying to fit f flourish and finish in there, but that's a build for another time. So firstly, for this build, we're going to grab Tondo, we're going to grab Grace, and we're going to grab Repost. I know what you're thinking. Sky, no flesh? How am I going to get away from anyone? How am I going to kill them? How am I going to, you know, get backstabs? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? Right now, Tondo is so strong due to the swiftness perk being fixed, as well as having, you know, refreshing strikes, which reduces all rapier cooldowns by 1% on any hit, and then also control breathing, which is 3 stamina on any hit. So I know what you're thinking. How are you going to hit them so much with this build? I don't understand. Let me show you why. Tondo's bleed stacks up to three times on a target. And what happens is each stack is technically its own damage source. So its own tick will provide actually three ticks for all of the hits on a target. So if we have three stacks of Tondo on someone and Refreshing Strikes is going to get ticked, it's going to get ticked for 3% cooldown just from the Tondo bleeds. For example, the control breathing, 3 stamina on any hit. 
if our dot is ticking three times per second on them, it's nine stamina on the Tondo Bleed stacks hitting them at once. So we're going to make sure to grab all of these. We're going to grab Refreshing Strikes. We're going to grab Control Breathing. And we're going to move down to Evade. We're going to grab Repost. Obviously, for the, you know, increased Repost duration, the making you unstoppable, um, you know, things like that. And obviously, the reduced cooldown on other, other abilities while you land Repost is very, very crucial to this build. Finally, we're going to grab Momentum, which is a major, major DPS increase tied in with Crescendo. Uh, crescendo, every time you basic attack, it reduces the cooldown of Evade, which allow you to potentially just spam Evades if you just, you know, have the option to do so. Also, pairing Adagio with, you know, Evading Forward grants you 15% damage, as well as pairing that with Momentum for 30% increased damage on your next ability. That's a 45% damage increase if you lunge forward with Evade, so that's a lot of damage. Afterward, we're going to grab 5% more damage with the Rapier Bleed, Thirst for Blood, and again, and proper spacing. This allows you to have your Tondo fully maxed out, which is definitely something we're looking for here. And for the last two perks, we're going to grab On Guard, which is 10% more damage while your target has greater than 50% health. And then we're going to grab Swiftness for that extra movement speed because it did just get fixed. So this is going to cap out our Ray Pierre build, which is amazing for having good spacing with Tondo, Repost stuns, also consistent DPS with Evade. I am absolutely in love with this build right now. I am I haven't switched it in weeks, so I'm, I'm definitely going to be sticking with this instead of Flesh for now. Now, one thing to remember finally is that Swiftness procs on Tondo. It doesn't proc on the damage over time effect. The only thing that procs off that is Refreshing Strikes and Controlled Breathing. So that's something to keep note of. Okay, so those are the talents of the Lone Wolf build. Now let's move on to some armor and some stats. So stats for this build, I only really see one option. I don't think 300 dexterity is viable enough right now to, you know, have 300 dexterity in the rest constitution. I think you lose a lot of damage out of that, and I don't think it's worth it. I think personally going 250 dex, 150 in, and trying to hit that 50 constitution mark for the increased potion consumable is mandatory, dude. The damage you deal from this build, and you're also tanky enough to be able to take a lot of damage, is insane. Having the 10% damage to the, uh, you know, stun slowed or rooted, this also pairs with your powder burn slow, um, your traps, um, you know, stuff like that. It's it's amazing. Also, repose stuns, that is an amazing, amazing perk that you're going to be using often. Uh, another key one is 150 intellect, which is 15% to additional elemental damage, and so good about that is i have the musket of unseen power chain lightning is an elemental damage so that's going to get bonus 15 percent damage and my topaz gem is going to get 15 percent damage as well um due to having that in there as well so it's it's a lot of extra bonus damage based off of this perk also we have a bonus 10 percent to critical hit damage we have the five percent thrust damage as well i mean we're getting a lot of bonus percentage damage increases and we're also very healthy um, another one is 10% bonus to backstab and headshot damage. So maybe if you repost, get a trap on them, roll behind them and get a big uh, backstab damage. I mean, you could deal a lot of good damage. You know, I wish I can hit that 50 constitution mark. I can with food, but now I'm going to move on to the next section, which is armor. Armor is very, very crucial to this build. We are running medium armor. I know, I know what you guys are thinking. Oh, no more light armor. Why are you running medium uh, don't you lose a lot of damage? No, you really don't. I still deal tons of damage with medium armor. I don't think light armor is even close to being worth it. Now, let me break down my armor and why I have everything the way it is right now. As you can see, I have two pieces of Void Bent. Void Bent is really, really good for that flat dexterity, the resilient. Uh, also, Invigorated is good for, uh, you know, some effects from like the hatchet throws or stuff like that. It's very, very good. Solid, solid pieces. Would I recommend buying them now? I don't think I would. I think they're really expensive. You could find some, uh, you know, resilient pieces cheap on the uh, trade post. Try to look out for those. Uh, I bought these like maybe a week and a half ago. So I, I did manage to get my hands on that. Um, also, I have these gloves right here. 24 decks, crippling powder burn. Very, very powerful glove. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a pattern here. All this is either heavy or medium armor. And it all has the resilient perk on it, which deals about 5% less damage to you when you're critically hit so melee when they finally get up close to me if they critically hit they're dealing a lot less damage to me they're dealing about 5 10 15 20 25 percent damage less to me when they critically strike which is 
a huge, huge damage reduction. When they think they're going to be bursting me, they're actually not hitting me as hard as they think. I'm also rocking a almost perfect weight distribution, so that's very, very good as well. If you want perfect weight distribution, and let's say you want to min-max to the absolute best you can, um, you have to get heavy on the head, heavy on the chest piece, uh, medium on the gloves, medium on the boots, and light on the pants. That would give you 22.9 equip load, and that would be 0.1 below heavy. So if you want to min-max, that would be the way to go. So right there is my, you know, armor distribution as well as stats. Now we're going to wrap up this build with gems as well as some perks you need to get. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to be talking about gems and stats. So to kick things off, we're going to start off with the gems. Okay, so for the musket, um, your number one choice with this build is going to be an elemental gem. I mean... Nine times out of ten, I would run an elemental gem because you're running that 150 intellect perk and you're getting that 15% bonus damage on it. So you're going to get a lot more damage and a big benefit out of running that. Now, next up, if you aren't going to be doing that and you're going to be running more of a dexterity, uh, you know, focus build, then I would recommend, you know, the Onyx. 30% uh, damage against targets with full health is a lot of damage on that initial shot. And, you know, maybe there's builds out there you could test without Powder Burn and maybe go Power Shot instead. So maybe going for that literal one shot on that, uh, you know, opener shot. Uh, Emerald is pretty good if you want to use your weapon as a finisher instead of like a uh, initiator. So that's an option. And then the last two are, you know, a little bit of wild cards. Uh, the Opole is decent damage. Uh, would I recommend it? I, I don't think I would. I mean, it's, it's an option though because it's there. The diamond can get some value if you want to stay very far back and snipe, and you can get some decent value out of it. 15% damage while your full health is pretty good. Um, it's something I'm going to try out with a full sniper build. Uh, I will post a video on that as well. But, you know, that's just an interesting option that, you know, you could take into consideration. Now, moving on to the rapier, uh, we got three options. Uh, the emerald, the tapaz, and the opole. Now, number one... Nine times out of ten, I use the emerald. I love to use my rapier as a finisher. Maybe, you know, uh, when the target makes a mistake, I, I get him with the repost. I get, I get behind them, get a nice big backstab off. Combined with that emerald is massive, massive damage. Um, you know, also the, you know, also the elemental gem on your rapier can be good as well because you can get that 15% bonus damage. Uh, that might be good if we're doing PvE scenarios, maybe like Expeditions. Getting good AoE pressure with that Topaz gem on there uh, can be potentially very good. Once again, it's very hard for the Opal to be used effectively in this build because we're getting so much energy back due to all the passives uh, from the from the Rapier. Um, maybe if we were in Light Armor, it could be possible, but Medium Armor, we're, we're getting our energy back very, very quickly, so I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, now time to move on to the juicy part, the weapon perks. Everyone's favorite perks to pick. Okay, now this can apply to both of them really, obviously except for Vorpal and Rogue, but let's start off with the first row, which is the S tier, the absolute best of the best, which is Enchanted. 10% flat increased damage. That is, that is insane amount of damage just on every shot. That's very, very powerful. Keenly Jagged, 7% weapon damage per second for 10 seconds. That equates out to 70% weapon damage if you land a headshot incredibly incredibly powerful um you know i'm i'm really debating on which one is number one for me but uh, i think overall enchanted is is very very powerful uh keenly empowered uncritical gain 15 percent increased damage that's really really good when you have a shooter stance window going uh you pop open that shooter stance open with that headshot and then finish them off with a couple body shots. Very, very powerful. Next up, we have Rogue. Rogue is phenomenal with the Rapier. It is my favorite perk with the Rapier, even more than Enchanted, because I like using the Rapier, you know, with heavy, heavy backstab damage and almost half healthing people with a serious backstab. I absolutely love it. Uh, moving on to the A tier is Vorpal, 14% headshot damage for that big, big headshot damage. Vicious as well, 11% damage, not bad. And then finally, we have Keen, which is the critical chance. Now, I don't think critical chance is very good on the Rapier at all, because the Rapier's basic attacks as it is don't hit hard unless you have a lot of things, you know, procced. The chance that it might proc just on your first attack instead of your more, you know, your more powerful ones can be kind of diminishing, but I prefer flat damage increases for the Rapier. Uh, like Keenly Empowered, Rogue, Enchanted. I love those. So definitely look out for some perks like that. 
And finally, to wrap it all up, we got some amazing armor perks. I love armor perks. They're very, very crucial to a build and making sure, you know, the foundation of it is really, really built up. Now, starting off with our S tier, we have Crippling Powder Burn, which is an insane slow once you land your Powder Burn, which allows you to then land more shots a lot easier. Empowering Shooter Stance, which is 22% damage increase after you land a shot in your Shooter Stance, which is a massive, massive damage increase if you're running Shooter Stance. Next up, we have Sundering Repost, which is when you repost somebody, they get 14% reduced damage absorption, meaning you hit them 14% harder for 10 seconds. What I love to do is you know, get someone with a repost, back up, land a trap on them, go into a powder burn shooter stance combo, and I hit two, three shots while they're in that trap for massive, massive damage. I don't care what armor you're wearing. Next up, we have Keen Tondo. The reason I put Keen Tondo in there is because it could be very effective if you're in a PvE scenario. Um, you know, while you're AoEing targets down, you, you put that Tondo on everyone, increase crit chance by 11% against targets affected by it. It could be really good when you're running Flourish and Finish and not Repose. PvE guy is going to be coming very, very soon. Don't worry about that, guys. Omnidirectional Vague can be very good. Um, you know, I would, I would use this if I'm wearing heavy armor just for, you know, evading side to side and getting some really good procs in there, but... It's it's just one of those perks. It's it's average, average at best. And lastly, for our jewelry, this is this gets pretty crucial as well. So we have keen awareness, 11% crit chance. I think this is an absolute must for us since we deal a lot more crit damage. Um, it is a must on the ring. I, I I wouldn't live without it. Next up, we have thrust damage. Um, you know that's very good since we all of our abilities are. All of our weapon damage is going to be coming from thrust damage, so that could be very powerful as well. Um, there's also a lightning damage one, you know, it depends on what elemental gem you're running, uh, that's possible as well. I didn't list it there because there's too many to list, but elemental damage increase is good as well. Uh, next up we have a very important one, which is resilient. You know, this helps you stay alive. You know, obviously if you don't stay alive, then you can't deal damage or kill anyone. So critical hit damage less to you is, is absolutely game changing. If you have like four or five of these stacked up, you're going to feel it immediately. And lastly, we have health, uh, you know. I would take health if you have about 100 constitution. Uh, that's really the only time I would take it. Would I take it with 50? I'm not really too sure. I haven't done enough testing on it, but I, I would definitely take it if maybe you want to drop 50 dexterity and put it into constitution to maybe hit that 100 constitution mark and grab that health and you would have maybe 9, almost 10k health. It would be very, very effective and you'd be a lot better at surviving. So it's entirely up to you and your gameplay style. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap up this video on the Lone Wolf build. I've had an insane amount of fun playing this build, and I know it is one of the best builds, if not the number one build for solo, you know, content for everything, whether it's OPR, solo PvP, solo gathering, everything you can do, it is amazing out in that open world. Remember, I stream during the week. Uh, either in the daytime or 8 p.m. Eastern Standard. So please be sure to stop on in and check on me. I mean, I so please be sure to stop on in, ask any questions. I'd be more than happy to answer. Uh, I would absolutely love to chat with every single one of you. My name is Scott from the Comeback Kids. I'll see you on the next one. Peace!